From WLWT, this is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues and Happy New Year. Yes, it is officially 2017, a whole new year, a whole new start. So a little later, we're going to talk about some really good things happening in the Finley Kitchen. We're also going to talk about Martin Luther King Day, which is coming up Monday, January 16th. Some really good things happening and you wanna stay tuned for that. So as I said, I'm, I'm Jan Michelle, or I didn't say I'm Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney with Sesh Communications and the Cincinnati Herald. Okay, what was your New Year's resolution? I bet it had something to do with money. So we have two people here from Prudential. They're both Prudential advisors, Tanya Wiley and Fred Darlington. And you're gonna talk to us about a topic that we all think about, really hate to face, and that's what to do, how to manage our money. How to, how to really, and, and I know New Year's Eve is always a time that we start thinking about, wow, it's a whole new year. What are we gonna do with all these bills that we amassed over the holiday, bills we had before, how are we gonna save for the future? What to do so we could come and drop that in your lap? Where do we start? All right, this is a great time for people to take a look back on what happened in 2016 and what they wanna do differently in 2017. Okay, so we're gonna make a fresh start. And you know, before we get started with that, let me just ask both of you to tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, well, I would have been in the insurance field for over 20 years. Oh, I wow. actually worked for Prudential back in the 80s. Wow. Um, for 10 years, then I went to Anthem for 13, and now I'm back, what I say, home at Prudential. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. And Fred, what about you? My background, I am actually a licensed attorney, and I spent most of my legal career in banking and then I moved over into the loan area so I was in lending for quite a while okay and now this is kind of my second career actually out trying to help people you know get their finances and uh, affairs and you know, together okay all right so I love that so you're both really experienced and that's that's good to know so where do we start I think um, people should understand the importance of working with an advisor Okay. When you meet with an advisor, they get to know you, they get to know what your situation, your financial situation is at this point. So we do a snapshot in time. Once we do that, then we find out what your financial goals are, and then we help you prioritize and put a plan in place. I love that, but let me ask you, Fred, do we have to have a ton of money to see, a, to see an advisor? Because, I mean, most of us think, well, we don't have much money, why are we gonna see a financial yes. advisor? No, no. We, we, we are trying to help folks. Uh, we start with by trying to help folks arrange your financial situation, get it under control. You want to create a budget. You want to start saving. You're, you know, you're never too young to start saving, nor are you ever too old. Uh, it's, you know, get started. Start investing. So you're both emphasizing it's never too late, never too early. I love that. And people think they have to have a lot of money, but they don't. No matter where you are in the financial um, st stage of life, we can help you come up with what's the next step. Okay, all right, well let's give, give us a few, you can't tell us everything in a, in a short time, but give us a few hints about setting financial goals. I would say the uh, first thing is 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 look at your look at your budget and make sure you're always putting something aside. If it's if it's ten percent, uh, that is fantastic. And if you start if you start at an early enough age, but by the time you reach retirement, you will have a nice uh, substantial amount of money to retire on. Okay, so so try to do at least ten percent. Try to do at least ten percent. And you know, I, I know someone used to say, and I can't remember who this was, but they always said, "Pay yourself first. Exactly. Yes. So when you get your paycheck, put some aside first, and then start, I guess, paying your bills would be a good, a good exactly. thing to do. That's <laughs> so. important. Absolutely. But I think for some people, they get overwhelmed by having to just set a small amount, get into the habit of it. Once right. you're in the habit of saving, then you can increase that amount over time and just continue to do that. And before you okay. know it, you don't even think about it. So be consistent. Be consistent. And Fred, you were saying something before we started that if you put that aside you don't even miss it right if you if you take a percentage out of your uh, your income and you never see it then you don't miss it and don't go the, the most important thing I think that, that for people to stress is not to look and say well I got this pot of money I, I want to get it because I want to buy this new car or I want to buy a boat you have to get that out of your mind. This is all something that's going to build, and if you save it for retirement, uh, if you truly, that's what it's for, it will be a nice uh, sum of money. I mean, even folks who don't make a lot, if they set that 10% aside, somebody making $45,000 a year, setting that 10% aside, will have a nice retirement. That'll add up, yeah. It adds up. So we say it's really not what you make, it's what you save, what, what, you, what you keep, right? Yeah. So that's important. What about managing risk? That was something else you guys mentioned. Let's talk about that a little bit. 
Well, you think about it, people will put insurance on their home, on their car, but your most valuable asset is yourself. Ooh. So you want to put some plans in place to make sure that you're protecting yourself and your family. So when you, do you do do you discuss things like term insurance versus whole life? Because I always find that confusing. <laughs> what, do you have any general advice about that? Well, or is it like lot, person by person? Yes, know. a lot of it comes comes depends on the person. I mean, how much can you afford? You want to have enough insurance to you know, if the, especially the breadwinner, uh, you have to have enough insurance in place, which is where term comes in, because you can afford to buy uh, enough insurance to replace that person's earnings. Uh, if you're a young family raising kids, uh, you may need you know, 10 to 20 years of, the, of earnings replacement. Mm -hmm. right. If you're older, uh, you know, the term people, the insurance companies don't carry the term out long, but we do need insurance in retirement for numerous reasons, replacing uh, income if one of the spouses passes or to help out on some type of chronic illness, for example, uh, you know, the medical expenses in retirement. Okay, so that's all really important. Then. Yes. Yeah. So we try to customize it to the individual, and sometimes it's a combination of permanent and term insurance. It just depends on what their ultimate goal is. So, and, and that's another reason that we should say it's really important to meet with a financial advisor and to, 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 have, your own, to have your own individual situation analyzed. Right. Put a plan set, together. For planning, right. And we really need to, you know, get going, right? I mean, we don't, it's, it's 2017. We said we're going to tackle this whole money issue. We're going to get some help with it. That's everybody's goal, right? We're going to move right. forward. We're going to all prosper in 2017. The hardest part is getting started. But getting once started. Yes. yes. Take right. that first step and then you're on your way. Right. So I want to make sure we have phone numbers. I don't know if we have them on the screen or not, but for Tanya, it's 513-830-2830. And for Fred, it's 513-830-2815. Yes. So 830-2815, 830-2830. Oh, we, well, we've got Tanya's number here, so that's great. And Fred said you can call either one. That's good. So you can just make that 30 or 15 for Fred. So Prudential Advisors, experienced financial advisors. This is what we need. And so thank you. You'll have to come back on. All right. Sounds good. Thank, thank you, you so much. We're going to really get going with 2017. Stick with us. We'll be back to talk about Finley Kitchen. Be back in a moment. Welcome back. So I'm here laughing with Brandon Hill. He's a community liaison. He's really like head honcho, but he doesn't like titles. So we're going to call him community liaison for Global Bites. Right, right. And this is something happening at the Finley Kitchen. Yes. Tell us yes, about the Finley yes. Kitchen. Um, first of all, the Finley Kitchen is an amazing place. The Incubator Kitchen, it was open just last year um, in 2016. And what they do is they support uh, entrepreneurship through food by allowing to all these different wonderful food entrepreneurs, vendors, all types of folks that have a space to create in a beautiful stainless steel kitchen, has 10 kitchens. Right. Um, and, and I mean- it's at Finley Market. It's, well, the kitchen is on, uh, is on across the street from Finley Market. Okay. But a lot of people sell their food at Finley Market. Oh, that's so cool, So the Finley yeah. Kitchen is an independent operated uh, facility. Oh, um, okay. But it's, it's a beautiful, wonderful space. Well, okay, now tell us about Global Bites. What is Global Bites? And this, oh, you've got all kinds of things going. This says Nepal. I don't know if we have this <laughs> up there, but something's happening. What's going on? Okay, so this is what's going on is this. A couple, well, about 15 years ago. Oh, no, Jeff is talking to me. He's trying to get a copy of this. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah. About 15 years ago, I met a friend of mine named uh, Manish KC, and uh, he's from Nepal. Asked to take him to the store um, and get like 200 pounds of rice. And I was at the store, I was like, dude, we're not gonna fit any more rice in this car. <laughs> right. Came back to the house and he invited me to dinner for the first time, right? Didn't really know the guy. Put in front of me um, newspaper and these plates full of dal, which is lentils, chicken, potatoes, cauliflower. And wow. it was just amazingly fragrant and spicy and wow. wonderful. And from there- It's almost like he works at magic. Oh, it was, it was amazing. And I ended up eating with them every, like about two or three times a week for the next year or so. Wow. And got this intense love for Nepali food. Wow. Well, so from- And it sounds really healthy too, with the it's, cauliflower it's, it's and yeah, the lentils. I, I lost yeah. a bunch of weight. Yeah. But, uh, oh, cool, that's always a plus, <laughs> yeah. But what happened was that we got to know each other. I heard his story, they heard my story. I got to learn more about Nepal and their country and the politics and the history and everything that's happening. And it was very interesting. I realized even 15 years later, 
how impactful that has been on my, my, my growth and development. Wow. And so I said to myself, how can we bring that type of experience to the people of Cincinnati? And oh, so I love that. Here we are yeah. January 7th, and we are having an amazing event that's small, 36 people tops, still uh -huh. trying to sell some tickets. And okay, well, so people need to need to jump have, on that. They have to get on. If this. you're stopping at 36, we better hurry well, up and get the those space tickets. Yeah. only goes to 36, but okay. that's what we wanted though. Okay. We want it small. We want it intimate. We wanted something that there's a, there's a saying in Nepal that says when you have a small fire, people move in close. Oh, I like that. And so that. that's that's what we're trying to do. And so the overall the idea is that we support um, entrepreneurship, immigrant entrepreneurship. We really want to marry the idea of storytelling, which is what this is about, wow. and food. So it's a multimedia um, experience to have all your senses fulfilled, uh, sight, visual, sound, smells, and ultimately taste when we'll have one big dinner together and really get to understand what this feels like, what it tastes like. And I'm, I'm just excited about that it. That is fantastic, Brandon. Yeah. And so, and I was saying that the proceeds go to benefit uh, an organization, uh, the Global Learning Project Li Live Learn Exchange. Live Learn Exchange has been uh, my baby for the past year and a half. Wow. Um, my life has been dedicated towards understanding um, and really preserving and putting out culture and recognize culture changes too. And so Live Learn Exchange, essentially what we're trying to do is connect classrooms around the planet. Um, we want to figure out how do we take, you know, children who are in the bubble. It doesn't matter if you're in the suburbs and the rural areas or in the inner city. Right. We realize that you only know what you know. You only want what it is that you know that you should want. But for some of our children who are in oftentimes desperate situations, conditions, we need them to see something outside their normal environment. Right, so they can have that vision. Absolutely. Yeah, go so, farther, reach farther. That's yeah. right. So Live Learn Exchange is a web-based platform, and we're connecting classrooms around the planet. So they were, we're at our beginning stages, so I'm really wow. excited about 2017 because um, we're going to hit that ground running uh, the next couple of tomorrow. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking, I'm so excited you're here in Cincinnati. So are, 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 are you actually from Cincinnati? I'm born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. Really? Okay. I'm born and raised, but... I'm so glad you came on up. I've been up here since 2000. This okay. is my home. This wow. is my second home, and I love this city. This is I great. I love this city. I ne never let anybody talk bad about this city. But, uh, you know, we always, like anywhere else in the world, we got work to do. Yeah. And if we're going to make a better world, we all have to take some real steps. Right. Um, so. I love that, Brandon. This is so positive, and what a great way to start to start the new year. So tell us again, January 7th, give us, give us all the details. January 7th, we will be at the Finley Kitchen at 7 p.m., um, it's an 18 and above event because, you know, we want it to be really, really special and there's some beer might, that might be served there and everything okay. like that. And, um, but January 7th, Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., it's a wonderful event. Bring your friends, bring your family, but you have to buy a ticket and pre-register. Right, only 36 places. Only 36 places. seats. So tell us how to register. If you go to the website, www.globalbites.org, okay. they'll have a link to the tickets. And... Um, you know, I'm really hoping to see everybody there. Okay, so globalbites.org, and I'm just going to, you all know, WLWT.com. We're going to link you to globalbites.org. Right. And there's a number here to call, 502-592-1725. Mm -hmm. It's up on the screen. That's Tell us that right number there. again, Brandon. It's 502-592-1725 uh, in Spanish, cinco, cero, dos, cinco, nueve, dos, diecete, veinte, cinco. Oh, I'm um, so impressed. <laughs> oh, I just love him. You, oh, but this you, is great. But we, we, we want to make this a series. And so Nepal is just our first stop. Oh, okay. But What's we, next? I don't know. You but, know, but I, some place, I would like right? to. You know, I really like to have it where we represent uh, different countries like Colombia. Um, we're talking to a woman, a local woman from uh, um, Cambodia, uh, wow. from the continent of Africa, like a Benin. I believe we're talking to a sister and somebody from yeah. Somalia as well. So That's we want to make it a global bites for real. So we're going to keep in touch with globalbites.org. But January seventh at seven o'clock with Chef Manish. Chef Manish Casey. Manish, okay. He's going to be telling Chef Manish story. Casey, okay. Yes, and you know what? I'm so glad to see you this morning. I know you got was up all night with New Year's. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But <laughs> you're here right. early, early. You're early, ready so. to go. All right, thanks, Brandon. Stick with us. We'll be back in a moment to talk about Martin Luther King Day.
Welcome back. Okay, it's almost Martin Luther King Day. Always so much going on that weekend. And then on Monday, on the actual day, you know, school is out. A lot of businesses are closed because we all come together to celebrate. First thing that happens is that MLK Legacy Breakfast in the morning. So we're going to talk about that for Nita Britton, who's on the Martin, Martin Luther King Committee and your sub-chair of the Martin Luther King uh, Youth Leadership Breakfast mm -hmm. Program and Edna Keon, who's chair, and you do all this great work with the youth at the Underground Railroad Freedom Center, so thank you for that. I know you're there all the time, and you know, it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Both, you're just both wonderful. So welcome. Well, thank you. Yeah, so we're excited. I'm so glad you're here. I was excited to see you this morning and to hear what's gonna happen in two weeks. And a lot of great things are gonna come about. You know, um, the uh, the King Legacy Breakfast, it's all, our theme is looking back, moving forward. I like that. And so, yeah. we've uh, gotta move forward. We've got Ooh. to move forward. Yeah. And we have to move forward with our youth. Yes. And that's where a lot of our emphasis are, uh, having the, um, the King Legacy Youth Leadership uh, Program. Right. So you're going to be able to uh, see about four outstanding young people that are going to do their presentation. And there is an award given to, uh, to them at wow. that day. And then after the breakfast, of course, you know that we always have the uh, coalition march. Yes. That starts at 1030 right there at the uh, Freedom Center. And the Center. march goes from the Freedom Center to Fountain, to Fountain Square, Square for the prayer service. Mm -hmm. And then this year to the Taft Theater. That, okay, the Taft right. Theater. To the Taft Theater. So. Okay, for a great program as it's always. It's going to be a great program. Yeah. And our youth are going to be uh, at that program also, the okay. awardees uh, for oh, the uh, leadership Well, we're going to come back and talk about that program in just a second. Okay. I want Edna to talk a little bit more about the youth. Who are these youth? Because they're from the, the uh, Youth Docent Program, aren't they? The, yes. The Lynx Youth Docent Program. Absolutely. So, so tell us about that. Okay, uh, well this is a program where high school students are chosen and they work in the program for about a year and once they graduate um, then they are offered the opportunity to become a part of the King Legacy Youth Leadership Program. That's right. And we should say, so they, I mean, it's a, it's a paid job, and it's, so young people actually have this opportunity, but I mean, it's really a lot of work because they have to get trained in history, and they have to learn how to be docents, they have to memorize all the uh, uh, exhibits, all the, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work, isn't yes. it? Mm -hmm. And and then they, they have seminars, too. Tell us about that. I know, that, I know um, Patrice Borders does the um, emotional quotient thing, emotional you know. Intelligence. And, and emotional yeah, emotional mm -hmm. intelligence mm -hmm. seminar, and then you have mm -hmm. career seminars and mm -hmm. financial literacy 101. Oh, good. Talking about financial literacy at an early age is great. Yes, and BB and T is also uh, been with us this year for oh, the good. first time. Oh, wonderful. So that's going to be uh, you know an awesome program that for is the. Uh, you know, and that is a program that we really want to emphasize that is sponsored by the Lynx, but the youth docents go through that year program, and we're looking for, you know, youth around the tri-state. Right, and, you know, and starts, high school from the 10th ninth grade to ninth, the 10th grade, ninth, ninth through the uh, 11th. Ninth through 11th grade, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And so now, okay, so Edna, you were, t I wanted to ask you about the four who were chosen to make a presentation at the breakfast. Tell us about them. Well, there are four young people and uh, one um, young man who's going to do a narrative. We have one young lady who prepared a quilt and wow. she dedicated it to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh my goodness. And it's wonderful. She's very, very talented. Wow. And we have an, a young lady who's going to do a narrative on you, the American people. Wow. And, um, it's that it. And uh, the other one is uh, concerning oh, uh, voting. Voting. The yes. power oh, of the voting. Dis disenfranchisement and education. Mm -hmm. And these that are high school point. students. These yes. are high school students. Some of them, uh, a couple of them are seniors. One is a junior. And they have to, what their project was is that how can you or your city or your community move Dr. King's dream and legacy forward. So this is their own personal selection. I love that. This is fantastic. So, okay, so it's, it's give us dates, times, and all that. Okay. And how do we get tickets? Because you know what? This breakfast sells out a lot. So we want to make sure that people get their tickets early. It so does. give us all the who, what, when, where. Okay. Um, you want to go ahead and do it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the event will be held uh, Monday. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, Monday, January 16th um, at 8 o'clock to 10.30. The doors open at 7.30 at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. And following that, the Martin Luther King Coalition March 
will gather at 1030. And for more information, uh, you may call 513-333-7706. And Edna, give us that number one more time. 513-333-7706. Seven seven zero six, and that's to get information and also to get tickets tickets. for the breakfast. The tickets yes. are thirty five dollars. We're still holding it thirty five. Oh, I was going to say that's a really good price. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great price. So thirty five dollars mm -hmm. for the breakfast. Um, of course, there's no charge for the march, for the, march. For the program at the Taft Theater. Is that's that free right. as well? Okay, that's right. So we're going to start with breakfast though, because mm -hmm. yes. that's going to be really inspirational. It's a great, a great time to great see people program. and to and to really to get network, inspired and just get ready for the day and to support our youth. Support mm -hmm. our youth. Okay. Thank Thank you, Renita. Thank you, Edna. Thank you. All right, we'll see you there. All right. Okay, okay, stick with us. We'll be back with some community events. Okay, to Michael Bobo, we'll be back next week, just want to let you know. Um, so some community events, and also let me mention that Reverend Damon Lynch III, that's the son, will be the keynote speaker at the Martin Luther King Coalition Breakfast. Okay, here's some events that are coming up. One is the Emancipation Proclamation uh, uh, 154th anniversary, a lot going on there. It's Monday, December, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's old. Well, it was Monday, December 26th, but that has passed. So we're gonna move on. I'm sure you were there. We're gonna move on to the next event, a movable feast. That's gonna be Friday, January 20th. That's done by the UC College Conservatory of Music. So you're tasting different pieces of, of uh, entertainment, of music and, and art and theaters. You don't wanna miss that. For more information, you wanna call 556-2526. 2528, I'm sorry, okay. And we have the Daddy Daughter Dinner Dance on Saturday, February 11th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Duke Energy Convention Center, Ballroom D. And the tickets are five, $15 for dads and $5 for daughters. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. That's the Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Herald's annual Daddy Daughter Dinner Dance, and that is just a really fabulous event. Uh, we always sell out, so make sure you go early. Go to the Cincinnati Herald, Dot com, the Cincinnati Herald dot com, only five dollars for a daughter, fifteen for dads, dinner, dancing, that keepsake video, lots going on. And I should introduce you to the other person who's with me here, and this is Asia Harris, and she's with us at the Cincinnati Herald. Welcome, Asia. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You did a great job. Thank you for okay, me. we want you to have a great week. Stay safe, stay positive. Yay, 2017.